Hello, hello, hello. We are back on Eddie's Challenge writing. This time we're going to pick this one. It was made in 1945, copyrighted 1945. It's called Minerals, Vegetables, and Animal Life. In the front page, it shows the perpetual motion holder. And it's written by Edward Leach Gallagher. On the back, it says October 45. Let's go ahead and open this up and Gas coil, huh? This is where Ed said they would lose no magnets in a situation like that. So, let's bypass the first section and we'll start off here. From the above experiment, you can see the perpetual motion holder can act as a living thing. It knows which way to swing each magnet. This shows if more magnets are added to a living thing, then it can perform things it could not do before. The same is true concerning our body and everything else. Those surplus magnets that are the real life Magnets in the general are indestructible. For instance, you can burn wood or flesh. You can destroy the body, but you cannot destroy the magnets that held together the body. They go somewhere else. Iron has more of the magnets than wood, and everything different substance has a different number of magnets that hold the substance together. If I make a battery with copper for positive terminal and beef for the negative terminal. I'll get more of the magnets out of it than when I use copper for positive terminal and sweet potato for negative terminal. From this you can see that no two things are alike. Several years ago I read a paper that the scientists cannot find out how green chlorophyll converts the sunlight in plant food. They are looking in the wrong direction. It is not the green chlorophyll that converts the sunlight in plant food. It is the water that does it. So here we go back to water, guys. Another practical use. The green chlorophyll was not so green in the first place. In fact, it was not green at all. It became green by evaporation. Evaporation. The water in plants catches the running sunlight that is coming from the sun and north and south pole magnets wrap themselves around the caught particles of sunlight as, and as soon as the particles of sunlight which are wrapped around the north and south pole magnets are coming in the suitable part of the plant, they will join the plant and become a part of it. The north and south pole magnets are going in and out of the earth all the time, everywhere, and their numbers are limitless. I found several lily ponds, pools, where I kept water in. I have watched the lily pools for 16 years. Here he goes again for 16 years. Sweet 16. Almost seems like sweet 16 is really just the time he was there in America. The north and south pole magnets are going in and out of the earth all the time, everywhere in great numbers. I have several lily pools where I kept water in. I have watched the lily pools for 16 years. When I put clear water in the pools where the sunlight can shine in, then in two months' time, I can see the moss is beginning to grow. But when I pour the water in the pools where there was no green chlorophyll, in the water. This shows that the plants can grow without green chlorophyll. The sunlight was running in the water every day and the north and south pole magnets were running through the water all the time. North and south pole magnets are passing through every tree. The bigger the tree, the more the magnets will be passing. 
through it. You have noticed that lightning hits the biggest tree and the tallest building in the North Hemisphere and South Pole magnets are going up and the North Pole magnets are coming down in the same flash. <clears throat> lightning only strikes if the North and South magnets are concentrated too much in a small place like a Tesla coil. If not concentrated, then they pass through everything without much notice. I believe that water, sunlight, and north and south pole magnets are making the plants grow. You have heard that if somebody happens to hold a power line in their bare hands, it becomes impossible for him to let loose the power line. The power line is full of north and south pole magnets, so they overpower the body's weaker system and make it impossible for it to open for it to open his hands. This shows that magnets can contract and release muscles. I can see tiny lightning in my eyes if I close the eyelids and give a side push to the eyeball from the nose outward. But I cannot do this every day. Hey guys, so close your eyes. Take your finger and just push lightly on the corner of your eyeball. You'll start to see flashes going everywhere. It happens to me. I do it at nighttime. Um, tried this experiment, and he's right. You'll start seeing power flashes everywhere. Sort of hurts a little bit, not so much the eyeball, because I don't think the eyeball, uh, there's pain in eyeballs, but I, I believe for some reason. But I believe that um, uh, it's it's a pressure pain, a pressure buildup pain in the brain when it happens is what I can take out of it. Okay, so the power line is full of north and south pole magnets, so they overpower the body's weaker system and make it impossible to open the hands. This shows that the magnets can contract and release muscles. I can see tiny lightning in my eyes if I close the eyelid and give a side push to the eyeball from the nose outward, but I can not do the, it every day. When I keep eating more for some time, when I keep eating more for some time, then I can see the tiny lightning while my eyes are open. All that I have to do is turn my head from side to, to another side. This shows that we have in our bodies the same kind of magnets that are making big lightning in the sky. When I connect my tongue and feet to a microamp meter, the meter shows that I have magnets in my body. Sometimes I have more magnets in my body than other times. The presence of magnets in our bodies would indicate the magnets are operating our muscles. 1945, guys. Where does our bodies get magnets from? Well, you know that to get magnets from zinc, we have to put zinc and acid in the battery where it can be dissolved. Our digestive system is like a battery but more complicated. We get magnets from the food we eat. The acid and other digestive juices dissolve the food, liberate the magnets to be used for other purposes. So that means in our body, I believe the muscle tissue are like capacitors. So when you go to move your arm, guys, um, or your fingers, you're using little parts of the muscle for the, for the capacitance. But if you go to take your arm and lift heavy weights, now you're going up in your arm and the bigger muscles of your shoulders and all the muscles that are being used are releasing capacitance to uh, gain that energy that you need to move the mass. That's my take. Leave your comments, okay? Um, so you have, through the layers of muscle tissue, you have capacitance built up in that muscle tissue. So the more muscle you have, the more capacitance you have, the more strength you have. Makes sense, don't it? Let's finish this up. I never studied juices. I never studied a human anatomy, but I know that there are little cords that the magnets can pass through. Your spinal cord, and um, I believe since iron is in your blood, 
that the blood traveling through your whole body that's bringing oxygen is also uh, supporting a buildup of uh, 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 juice to the capacitance layers of your muscle tissue in your body. Leave your comments. All our body functions are physical. There is no mental function in us. For instance, thinking the same as talking is physical process. We all would think loud if we're not su suppressed while we were small. When we think, we contract the muscles that are for that purpose, like I just said, huh? But the contraction is so delicate, we cannot notice it. This is all that I can tell about the body functions. If, you, if I have studied chemistry and human anatomy, I'm sure I could tell you more about the body functions. Well, I hope you guys like this little, I would say, Ed Reed Scallon lecture. Let's start rocking. I got some more writings, um, some more things to read. Um, I will keep you guys in tune. We'll start bringing in uh, some of the comments from uh, this little guy here, a book in every home. And then there's one other book I want to attach to this lecture series. And Mr. Kant is Dead is one of them. And the other, um, where might it be? There it is. How to Read His Writings. Ed Lee Scallon. Now, I know Ed didn't write that, so that's one of the main reasons we are not including this in what Ed wrote, but there's sections in here that you just can't just go by and, and discount it. There's things in here that really, really um, kind of opens your eyes. Now, whether it's true or not, you know, the way they start taking the triangles and, and put them towards their head and towards each other and different things like that. There was a section here that caught my eye. Um, I don't know where it is right now, but we'll pull it up offline here and we'll find out what they were talking about and how do we apply it and do we find any facts in the, uh, in the, I think this might be the section here. Let's just read a second. It says, the thing to remember is not to confuse 10 hertz electromagnetic field with 10 hertz of sound, since sound is a different beast. Okay. So, electromagnetic wave sound base. These are things that we're going to be working on with this project here. And we'll just read this little topic and just see if you guys are interested in this. So just, let me see. I don't want to miss out on the good stuff. And uh, we are, for the lack of better phrase, creating, created or designed to only see what we are allowed to see, and obviously that is so true. Every advance that science has made has expanded our limit, limited vision of what we cannot see with our eyes alone. Science has told us that the visible light that our eyes can sense is only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, that all of whatever it is, Science also tells us that everything on the electromagnetic spectrum has its own inherent frequency intensity, and they all move at the speed of light, but only when it is in vacuum. If these massless things travel anything else, science has told us that they slow down a little bit and no longer travel the speed of C light I guess these are radio waves light x-rays on up to gamma rays where the sight of science 